everybody. We're back. We're going to read the rest of chapter six today. Um, and Lily and I also wanted to show you our stalactite and stalagmite project that we've been doing. How many days has it been growing? Two days? Today's day three, right? Yeah. I think today's day three that it's been growing. And we have a very nice stalactite as well as a stalagmite growing. Um, there was a different one that grew that was really sharp and pointy and looked like an icicle. And then it fell. Inside. It fell last night. Yeah, it collapsed in the middle of the night. Um, but, I woke up this morning and I saw that it wasn't there. But I'm going to bring you over to our kitchen table where we have it growing. Um, let me see if this works. I'm going to try not to drop the computer. And I want to see if you can see it. We set it in front of the window so that the sun could help um, with the evaporation process. And can you see? Yeah, if I put my hand behind it, you can kind of see. We've got a nice little um, stalactite growing from the top. And we've got a nice pile of salt underneath that's growing into a stalagmite. And so they're not quite touching. Why does but this very one look close. like it's turning into ice? But it's like solid. Oh, under here you can see in the in our jar. Ooh, I'm gonna try not to bump it. Um, I don't want to collapse our project. But right under here, that's a good question, Lily. You said, why does it look like little icicles and stuff under here? This is actually where the salt. I don't know if you can see it. This is where the salt has started to um, solidify at the bottom of the jar, and. We've also got, you can see these little salt deposits here on the side of the jar, of this jar. Can you see those, Lily? Mm -hmm. So that's just where the water has already evaporated and the salt has solidified. Because this is actually, if you touch it, here you can touch it and feel it, Lily. Look, this is, that's yeah, how big there's Epsom a salt, salt is. Yeah, there's a salt crystal. This is actually on the outside of the jar. So the fact that this is on the outside of the jar makes me think that when I was stirring it um, to get the salt to dissolve, I probably splashed some salt water on the outside of the jar. And Do not eat Epsom salt. Yeah, and that salt water, the water part has already evaporated, but the salt has solidified to make these cool little crystal things down here at the bottom. So I've got salt on my fingers now. So that's pretty cool. So I wanted to just touch base with you on that. We're going to let it continue to grow. Um, we'll probably give it about five days. Like I said, today is day three. So we'll give it a few more days and we'll see what happens. Yep, so that would be two more days. All right. You ready to read? Yeah. Here we go. All right. So we're going to finish chapter six. We started it the other day. We're going to finish it today. I'm trying to get Stormy to come up on my lap. The dog wants to read with us. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. Stormy, come here. All right, if you'll remember, Chapter 6 was called The Journey from Platform 9 and 3 Quarters. See her? Yeah, there she is. Um, so Harry is on his way to Hogwarts. He just went to King's Cross Station. He was the looking mom paid for... Attention to me. Mm -hmm. Pay attention to me. Well, we're in the middle of our story time, Stormy, so don't interrupt. Um, he had gone to King's Cross Station, and he's got his ticket to Hogwarts. He had to find Platform 9 and 3 quarters. He could find Platform 9, he could find Platform 10, but wasn't sure where 9 and 3 quarters was. Um, that's when he ran into the Weasley family. He heard them talking about muggles. And since muggle is the wizarding word for non-magic folk, he decided he would follow them. And that's how he decided, he figured out how to get on the platform. So the train, the Hogwarts Express, has just taken off. And we're going to follow Harry on the rest of his train ride. Harry watched the girl and her mother disappear as the train rounded the corner. Houses flashed past the window. Harry felt a great leap of excitement. He didn't know what he was going to, but it had to be better than what he was leaving behind. The door of the compartment slid open and the youngest red-headed boy came in. Anyone sitting there? He asked, pointing at the seat opposite Harry. Everywhere else is full. Harry shook his head and the boy sat down. He glanced at Harry, then looked quickly out of the window, pretending he hadn't looked. Harry saw he still had a black mark on his nose. Hey, Ron. The twins were back. Listen, 
We're going down the middle of the train. Lee Jordan's got a giant tarantula down there. Mm. Right, mumbled Ron. Harry, said the other twin, did we introduce ourselves? Fred and George Weasley, and this is Ron, our brother. See you later then. Bye, said Harry and Ron. The twins slid the compartment door shut behind them. Are you really Harry Potter? Ron blurted out. Harry nodded. Oh, well, I thought it might be one of Fred and George's jokes, said Ron. And have you really got, you know, he pointed at Harry's forehead. Harry pulled back his bangs to show the lightning scar. Ron stared. So that's where you know who? Yes, said Harry, but I can't remember it. Nothing? asked Ron eagerly. Well, I remember a lot of green light, but nothing else. Wow, said Ron. He sat and stared at Harry for a few moments. As though he had suddenly realized what he was doing, he looked quickly out of the window again. Are all your family wizards? asked Harry, who found Ron just as interesting as Ron found him. Uh, yeah, I think so, said Ron. I think Mom's got a second cousin who's an accountant, but we never talk about him. So you must know loads of magic already. The Weasleys were clearly one of those old wizarding families the pale boy in Diagon Alley had talked about. I heard you went to live with muggles, said Ron. What are they like? Horrible. Well, not all of them. My aunt and uncle and cousins are, though. Wish I'd had three wizard brothers. <laughs> Five, said Ron. For some reason, he was looking gloomy. I'm the sixth in our family to go to Hogwarts. You could say I've got a lot to live up to. Bill and Charlie have already left. Bill was head boy and Charlie was captain of Quidditch. Now Percy's a prefect. Fred and George mess around a lot, but they still get really good marks and everyone thinks they're really funny. Everyone expects me to do as well as the others. But if I do, it's no big deal because they did it first. You never get anything new either with five brothers. I've got Bill's old robes, Charlie's old wand, and Percy's old rat. Ron reached inside his jacket and pulled out a fat gray rat, which was asleep. His name's Scabbers, and he's useless. He hardly ever he's wakes so up. He's so cute, though. <laughs> not. Percy got an owl from my dad for being made a prefect, but they couldn't afford. I mean, I got Scabbers instead. Ron's ears went pink. He seemed to think he had said too much because he went back to staring out of the window. Harry didn't think there was anything wrong with not being able to afford an owl. After all, he had never had any money in his life until a month ago, and he told Ron so, all about having to wear Dudley's old clothes and never getting proper birthday presents. This seemed to cheer Ron up. And Hagrid told me I didn't know anything about being a wizard, or my parents, or Voldemort. Ron gasped. What? said Harry. You said you know whose name, said Ron, sounding both shocked and impressed. I'd have thought you of all people. I'm not trying to be brave or anything, saying the name, said Harry. I just never knew you shouldn't. See what I mean? I've got loads to learn, I bet, he added, voicing for the first time something that had been worrying him a lot lately. I bet I'm the worst in the class. You won't be. There's loads of people who come from muggle families, and they learn quick enough. While they had been talking, the train had carried them out of London. Now they were speeding past fields of, full of cows and sheep. They were quiet for a time, watching the fields and lanes flick past. Around half past twelve, there was a great clattering outside the corridor, and a smiling, a, <laughs> a smiling dimpled woman slid back their door and said, Anything off the cart, dears? I love, I love the, the candy lady. She's so cute. She is super cute. Harry, who hadn't had any breakfast, leapt to his feet, but Ron's ears went pink again, and he muttered that he had brought sandwiches. Harry went out into the corridor. He had never had any money for candy with the Dursleys, and now that he had pockets rattling with gold and silver, he was ready to buy as many Mars bars as he could carry. But the woman didn't have Mars bars. What she did have were Birdie Bot's Every Flavor Beans, My favorite. Drubal's Best Blowing Gum, Chocolate Frogs, Pumpkin Pasties, Cauldron Cakes, Licorice Wands, and a number of other strange things Harry had never seen in his life. 
Not wanting to miss anything, he got some of everything and paid the woman eleven silver sickles and seven bronze nuts. Ron stared at as Harry brought it all back into the compartment and tipped it onto an empty seat. Hungry are you? <laughs> Starving, said Harry, taking a large bite out of a pumpkin pasty. Ron had taken out a lumpy package and unwrapped it. There were four sandwiches inside. He pulled one of them apart and said, She always forgets I don't like corned beef. Swap you for one of these, said Harry, holding up a pasty. Go on. You don't want this. It's all dry, said Ron. She hasn't got much time, he added quickly. You know, with five of us. Go on, have a pasty, said Harry, who had never had anything to share before. Indeed, anyone to even share it with. It was a nice feeling sitting there with Ron, eating their way through all Harry's pa pasties, cakes, and candies. The sandwiches lay forgotten. Mm -hmm. What are these? Harry asked Ron, holding up a pack of chocolate frogs. They're not really frogs, are they? He was starting to feel that nothing would surprise him. No, said Ron, but see what the card is. I am missing Agrippa. What? Oh, of course you wouldn't know. Chocolate frogs have cards inside of them, you know, to collect. Famous witches and wizards. I've got about 500, and I, but I haven't gotten Agrippa or Ptolemy. Harry unwrapped his chocolate frog and picked up the card. It showed a man's face. He wore half-moon glasses, had a long crooked nose, and flowing silver hair, a beard, and a mustache. Underneath the picture was the name Albus Dumbledore. So this is Dumbledore, said Harry. We have uh, heard that name before. We have. Don't tell me you've never heard of Dumbledore, said Ron. Can I have a frog? I might get a grippa. Thanks. Harry turned over his card and read, Albus Dumbledore, currently headmaster of Hogwarts, considered by many the greatest wizard of modern times. Dumbledore is particularly famous for his defeat of the dark wizard Grindelwald in 1945, for the discovery of the 12 uses of dragon's blood, and his work on alchemy with his partner Nicholas Flamel. Professor Dumbledore enjoyed, enjoys chamber music and tin pin bowling. Harry Nicholas Flamel. Nicholas Flamel. That's an important name that you'll want to remember for later on. Write it time. down. <laughs> I'm going to write it down. <laughs> Harry turned the card back over and saw, to his astonishment, that Dumbledore's face had disappeared. He's gone. Well, you can't expect him to hang around all day, said Ron. He'll be back. No, I've got Morgana again. I've got about six of her. Do you want it? You can start collecting. Ron's eyes strayed to the pile of chocolate frogs waiting to be unwrapped. Help yourself, said Harry. But in, you know, the muggle world, people don't, people just stay put in photos. Do they? They don't move at all? Ron sounded amazed. That's weird. Harry stared as Dumbledore sidled back into the picture on his card and gave him a small smile. Ron was more interested in eating the frogs than looking at the famous witches and wizards cards, but Harry couldn't keep his eyes off of them. Soon, he had not only Dumbledore and Morgana, but Heist the Woodcroft, Alberic Runion, Sears, Parcellius, and Merlin. He finally, yeah. Tore, yeah, he finally tore his eyes away from the druidess, Cleona, who was scratching her nose to open a bag of Bertie Bott's Every Flavor Beans. Will you let the dog out, baby? Mm -hmm. Sorry, the dog's crying. You want to be careful with those, Ron warned Harry. When they say every flavor, they mean every flavor. You know, you get all the ordinary ones like chocolate and peppermint and marmalade, but then you can get spinach and liver and tripe. Liver! George reckons he had a booger-flavored one once. Ron picked up a green bean, looked at it carefully, and bit into a corner. Ugh! See? Sprouts. They had a good time eating the every flavor beans. If there is a liver flavor one, are you... What's it called? What? Are you a cannibal if you're eating a liver oh. flavored <laughs> jelly bean? <laughs> Harry got toast, coconut, baked bean, strawberry, curry, grass, coffee, 
sardine, and was even brave enough to nibble the end off of a funny gray one that Ron wouldn't touch, which turned out to be pepper. The countryside... That's not too bad. I mean, it's edible. Bad. What is the game? Grass is not edible. Be- uh, Bean Boozle yeah. Challenge. Bean Boozle Challenge. you've ever challenge. heard of the... Uh, they make, like, this candy game called the Bean Boozle Challenge, and all of the uh, jelly beans, there's different flavors, but there's different ones, and they all look the same. Um... But, like, there would be a tutti fruity flavored one and a sock-flavored one, and they'd look exactly the same, so mm-hmm. you wouldn't know what you got. You didn't know if you were getting a good one or a nasty one. Mm-hmm. They have spoiled milk, they have canned, spoiled milk dog canned, food. canned dog food that Mom oh. always gets. I always get that one, and it is disgusting. <laughs> I always get the chocolate ones, and she always yeah. gets the dog food. I always one. get dog food. <laughs> Every time we play, I always get dog food. It's disgusting. What else do they have? They have spoiled milk, they had spoiled dog food, milk, dog grass, food, grass, lima beans, oh, lima beans, toothpaste, which is not too bad. Toothpaste is Tooth- not too bad. Toothpaste is not too I'm bad sorry. if you like minty toothpaste. Yeah. If you're okay with minty yeah. toothpaste. So, but the Bean Boozle Challenge is actually kind of based on the idea of um, the Birdie Bots Every Flavor Beans. It's kind of the same thing. The countryside, now flying past the window, was becoming wilder. The neat fields had gone. Now there were woods, twisting rivers, and dark green hills. There was a knock on the door of their compartment, and the round-faced boy Harry had passed on platform nine and three quarters came in. He looked tearful. Sorry, he said, but have you seen a toad at all? When they shook their heads, he wailed. I've lost him. He keeps getting away from me. Oh, that's completely different from the movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is. If you've ever seen the movie, it's way different. There's a different character that comes to the door mm-hmm. and asks about a toad. That's why it's always cool when you watch a movie that's based on a book. If you really like the movie, go back and read the book and see um, what How you... How different it is. Yeah, see what you can find, differences in the details. When they shook their heads, he wailed. I've lost him. He keeps getting away from me. He'll turn oh, up, Neville. said Harry. Yes, said the boy miserably. Well, if you see him, he left. Oh, Neville. Don't know why he's so bothered, said Ron. If I'd brought a toad, I'd lose it as quick as I could. Mind you, I brought scabbers, so I can't talk. The rat was still snoozing on Ron's lap. He might have died, and you wouldn't know the difference, said Ron in disgust. <laughs> I tried to turn him yellow yesterday to make him more interesting, but the spell didn't work. I'll show you. Look. He rummaged around in his trunk and pulled out a very battered-looking wand. It was chipped in places, and something white was glinting at the end. Unicorn hair nearly poking out. Anyway. He has a unicorn hair core like me. Mm -hmm. He had just raised the wand when the compartment door slid open again. The toadless boy was back, but this time he had a girl with him. She was already wearing her new Hogwarts robes. Has anyone seen a toad? Neville's lost one, she said. She had a bossy sort of a voice, lots of bushy brown hair, and rather large front teeth. I didn't wear the white pajamas for this. That's okay. We've already told him we haven't seen it, said Ron, but the girl wasn't listening. She was looking at the wand in his hand. Oh, are you doing magic? Let's see it then. She sat down. Ron looked taken aback. Uh, All right. He cleared his throat. <clears throat> Sunshine daisies, butter mellow, turn this stupid fat rat yellow. He waved his wand, but nothing happened. Scabbard stayed gray and fast asleep. Are you sure that's a real spell, said the girl? Well, it's not very good, is it? I've tried a few simple spells just for practice, and it's all worked for me. Nobody in my family's magic at all. It was ever such a surprise when I got my letter, but I was ever so pleased, of course. I mean, it's the very best school of witchcraft there is. I've heard I've learned all our course books by heart, of course. I just hope it will be enough. I'm Hermione Granger, by the way. Who are you? She said all this very fast. Harry looked at Ron and was relieved to see by his stunned face that he hadn't learned all the course books by heart either. I'm Ron Weasley, Ron muttered. Harry Potter, said Harry. Are you really, said Hermione. I know all about you, of course. I got a few extra books for background reading, and you're in Modern Magical History and The Rise and Fall of the Dark Arts and 
great wizarding events from the 20th century. I've changed into my robes. Oh, good. Perfect. Am I? said Harry, feeling dazed. Goodness, didn't you know? I'd have found out everything I could if it was me, said Hermione. What happened? I don't know what happened. There we go. Oh, our computer did something crazy there for a second. Thought we lost you guys. Let's see, where was I? Do either of you know what house you'll be in? I've been asking around, and I hope I'm in Gryffindor. It sounds by far the best. I heard Dumbledore himself was in it, but I suppose Ravenclaw wouldn't be too bad. Anyway, we'd better go and look for Neville's Toad. You two had better change, you know. I expect we'll be there soon. And she left, taking the toadless boy with her. Whatever house I'm in, I hope she's not in it, said Ron. He threw his wand back into his trunk. Stupid spell. George gave it to me, but he knew it was a dud. What house are your brothers in? asked Harry. Gryffindor, said Ron. Gloom seemed to be settling on him again. Mom and Dad were in it, too. I don't know what they'll say if I'm not. I don't suppose Ravenclaw would be too bad, but imagine if they put me in Slytherin. That's the house of all, I mean, you know who was in. Yeah, said Ron. He flopped back into his seat looking depressed. You know, I think the ends of Scabber's whiskers are a bit lighter, said Harry, trying to make Ron take Ron's mind off houses. So what do your older brothers do now that they've left anyway? Harry was wondering what a wizard did once he finished school. Charlie's in Romania studying dragons, and Bill is in Africa doing something for Gringotts, said Ron. Did you hear about Gringotts? It's been all over the Daily Prophet but I don't suppose you get that with the muggles. Someone tried to rob a high-security vault. Harry stared. Really? What happened to them? Nothing. That's why it's such big news. They haven't been caught. My dad says it must have been a powerful dark wizard to get round Gringotts, but they don't think they took anything. That's what's odd. Of course, everyone gets scared when something like this happens in case you know who is behind it. Harry turned his news, the news over in his mind. He was starting to get a prickle of fear every time you know who was mentioned. He supposed this was all part of entering the magical world, but it had been a lot more comfortable saying Voldemort without worrying. What's your Quidditch team? Ron asked. Uh, I don't know of any, Harry confessed. What? Ron looked dumbfounded. Oh, wait. Just you wait. It's the best game in the world. And he was off explaining all about the four balls and the positions of the seven players, describing famous games he had been to with his brothers and the broomstick he'd like to get if he had the money. He was just taking Harry through the finer points of the game when the compartment door slid open yet again. But it wasn't Neville, the toadless boy, or Hermione Granger this time. Three boys entered, and Harry recognized the middle one at once. It was the pale boy from Madame Malkin's robe shop. He was looking at Harry with a lot more interest than he had shown back in Diagon Alley. Is it true, he said, they're all saying all up and down the train that I Harry Potter's in this a compartment. Few trinkets. Okay. If you'd ever have a chocolate frog, this is what it would look like. Mom's got a ton of stuff upstairs. I do. So there's the chocolate frog. And the card inside. What have we got? We've Minerva McGonagall. Mm-hmm. Who else do we have? Helga Hufflepuff? Yeah, Helga Hufflepuff. Helga Hufflepuff. Mommy's in Hufflepuff. I'm in Gryffindor. Mm -hmm. I'm a Hufflepuff. All right, let's see how many more pages we've got. Okay, we've got a few more pages. And Birdie Bot's Evie flavored beans mm -hmm. would be in this container. Yep. Is it true, he said, they're all saying it down the, all up and down the train that Harry Potter's in this compartment. So it's you, is it? Yes, said Harry. He was looking at the other boys. Both of them were thickest and looked extremely mean. Oh, you brought your wand? This is Hermione's wand. This is Hermione's wand. Standing on either side of the pale boy, they looked like bodyguards. Oh, this is Crab and this is Goyle, said the pale boy carelessly, noticing where Harry was looking. And my name's Malfoy. Draco Malfoy. Uh, Ron gave a slight cough, which might have been hiding a snigger. Draco Malfoy looked at him. Think my name's funny, do you? No need to ask who you are. My father told me all the Weasleys have red hair, freckles, and more children than they can afford. He turned back to Harry. You'll soon find out some wizarding families are much better than others, Potter. You don't want to go making Wait, friends with the wrong the sort. Mm-hmm. 
I can help you there. So, in the movie, they actually get to Hogwarts before Malfoy starts saying all this junk. Mm -hmm. But in the book, originally, this conversation happens on the train. He held out his hand to shake Harry's, but Harry didn't take it. I think I can tell who the wrong sort are for myself, thanks, he said coolly. Draco Malfoy didn't go red, but a pink tinge appeared on his pale cheeks. I'd be careful if I were you, Potter, he said slowly. Ah. Unless you're a bit politer, you'll go the same way as your parents. They didn't know what was good for them either. You hang around with riffraff like the Weasleys and that Hagrid, and it'll rub off on you. Both Harry and Ron stood up. Say that again, Ron said, his face was red as his hair. Oh, you're going to fight us, are you? Malfoy said. I would. Unless you get out now, said Harry more bravely than he felt, because Crabbe and Goyle were a lot bigger than him or Ron. But we don't feel like leaving, do we, boys? We've eaten all our food, and you still seem to have some. Goyle reached toward the chocolate frogs next to Ron. Ron leapt forward, but before he'd so much as touched Goyle, Goyle let out a horrible yell. Scabbers the rat was hanging off his finger. His sharp little teeth sunk deep into Goyle's knuckles. Crab and Malfoy backed away as Goyle swung Scabbers round and round, howling, and when Scabbers finally flew off and hit the window, all three of them disappeared at once. Good job, Scabbers. Perhaps they thought there were more rats lurking among the sweeps, or perhaps they had heard footsteps, because a second later, Hermione Granger had come in. What has been going on, she said, looking at the sweeps all over the floor, and Ron picking up Scabbers by his tail. I think he's been knocked out, Ron said to Harry. He looked closer at Scabbers. No, I don't believe it. He's just gone back to sleep. And so he had. You've met Malfoy before? Harry explained about the meeting in Diagon Alley. I've heard of his family, said Ron darkly. They were some of the first to come back to our side after you know who disappeared. Said they'd been bewitched. My dad doesn't believe it. He says Malfoy's father didn't need an excuse to go over to the dark side. He turned to Hermione. Can we help you with something? You'd better hurry up and put your robes on. I've just been up to the front to ask the conductor, and he says we're nearly there. You haven't been fighting, have you? You'll be in trouble before we even get there. Scabbers has been fighting, not us, <laughs> said Ron, scowling at her. Would you mind leaving us alone while we change? All right. I only came in here because people outside are behaving very childishly childishly racing up and down the corridors said Hermione in a stiff voice and you've got dirt on your nose by the way did you know just that Ron glared at her as she left Harry peered out of the window it was getting dark he could see mountains and forests under a deep purple sky the train did seem to be slowing down he and Ron took off their jackets and pulled on their long black robes Ron's were a bit short for him you could see his sneakers underneath them a voice echoed through the train. We will be reaching Hogwarts in five minutes' time. Please leave your luggage on the train. It will be taken to the school separately. Harry's stomach lurched with nerves, and Ron, he saw, looked pale under his freckles. They crammed their pockets with the last of the sweets and joined the crowd thronging in the corridor. The train slowed down and finally stopped. People pushed their way towards the door and out onto a tiny dark platform. Harry shivered in the cold night air. Then a lamp came bobbing over, their he over the heads of the students, and Harry heard a familiar voice. Hagrid! First years! First years over here! All right there, Harry. Hagrid's big, hairy face beamed over the sea of heads. Come on, follow me. Any more first years? Mind your step now. First years, follow me. Slipping and stumbling, they followed Hagrid down what seemed to be a steep, narrow path. It was so dark on either side of them that Harry thought there must be thick trees there. Nobody spoke much. Neville, the boy who kept losing his toad, sniffed once or twice. You'll get your first year sights of Hogwarts in a second, Hagrid called over his shoulder, just round the bend here. There was a loud oof. The narrow path had opened suddenly onto the edge of a great black lake. Perched atop a high mountain on the other side, its windows sparkling in the starry sky, was a vast castle with many turrets and towers. No more than four to a boat. Hagrid called, pointing to a fleet of little boats sitting in the water by the shore. Harry and Ron were followed into their boat by Neville and Hermione. Uh -huh. Everyone in, shouted Hagrid, who had a boat to himself. Right then, forward. Oh, yeah, you've got your boat truckle. 
And the fleet of little boats. More cards. More cards. Okay, we'll show those in a minute. Let's finish the chapter, okay? And the fleet of little boats moved off all at once, gliding across the lake, which was as smooth as glass. Everyone was silent, staring up at the great castle overhead. It towered over them as they sailed nearer and nearer to the cliff on which it stood. Heads down, yelled Hagrid as the first boats reached the cliff. They all bent their heads, and the little boats carried them through a curtain of ivy that hid a wide opening in the cliff face. They were carried along a dark tunnel, which seemed to be taking them right underneath the castle, until they reached a kind of underground harbor, where they clambered out onto rocks and pebbles. "'Oi, you there! Is this your toad?' said Hagrid, who was checking the boats as people climbed out of them. "'Trevor!' cried, Nev cried Neville blissfully, holding out his hands. Then they clambered up a passageway in the rock after Hagrid's lamp coming out at last onto smooth, damp grass right in the shadow of the castle. They walked up a flight of stone steps and crowded around the huge oak front door. Everyone here? You still got your toad? Hagrid raised a gigantic fist and knocked three times on the castle door. All right, that's the end of chapter six. I got him to sit on your shoulder, but he won't sit on my shoulder. Is he not behaving for you? No. This is Twigsy, my bro, bro truckle. He's one of the magical creatures from Harry Potter. Is he gonna Twigsy's not wanting to behave. Fine, really. sit on your shoulder. <laughs> oh. Anyway, so we'll be back soon with chapter seven, and we'll show you some more of our chocolate frog cards, and we'll try to bring Twigsy back. And maybe we'll even show you some of our wands. So we'll be back soon with Chapter 7. Bye.